So you just got your return back. Now the question is, what are you gonna do with all that money? Time to go shopping. Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. We do videos all about adventure motorcycling from the bikes we ride, the gear that we use, the trips that we take, tips, tricks, tutorials, anything under the sun when it comes to adventure motorcycling. You're gonna find it on this channel. If that's the sort of thing you're interested in, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we upload a new video. And if you like this particular video, hit that thumbs up, it really helps the channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few of the ways that you can spend that little extra cash that you got on any sort of adventure gear that you need for this year. So I tried to break it down in a couple of different ways, starting from kind of lower dollar items, going all the way up to the really high price stuff. So if you got a massive return, you can go right to the end of this video to see stuff that makes sense for you. But we'll start with the lower stuff first. First off, there's t-shirts out there. And I know that everybody has different t-shirts or stuff available. Be Gone For Good has their own t-shirts. You can find links down in the description. Some really cool stuff, some stuff to support the channel. But there's shirts from everybody out there. And there are also websites like Teespring where you can make your own shirts. So if you just want a picture of you on your bike or the last trip you took or some quippy little saying that you have in your back pocket, you can put it on a t-shirt and have it for yourself for all time. That is our first recommendation for spending. It's just get some shirts branded for your own stuff or for somebody's stuff that you like and enjoy that. Next up is stickers. And I'm a really big proponent in stickers. I think everybody should have stickers for every trip that they're on, for whatever their little group is or their organization or the team of riders that you go with. There should be just a some sort of branding for that. And there are a bunch of sticker companies out there. I happen to use Sticker Mule. I think they do a really good job. Plus, they offer discounts. So for as little as like nine bucks, 10 bucks, you can get 50 stickers of whatever you want. And it's just super easy to do. They look good. They don't fade in the sun. They stick really well to all sorts of plastic and metal, even through some really bad rains or the mud or the dirt. Just a, a great company to deal with when you're talking about simple stickers for everyday riding. Next up, talking about jerseys. Now this one I made myself off of a website called Canvas. They've got all sorts of different designs and colors and even icons that you can use for different sponsors. Just tons of fun to build your own jersey. And the price comes in at about 60, 70 bucks, which is fairly typical for what a jersey would cost. And then all summer long, you can wear your own jersey custom made anywhere you go. Up next, we have a little bit of good that you can do with a BDR donation. They have three different tiers. They've got a bronze, a silver, a gold, and I think a lifetime on top of that. But all of them are very worthwhile. There's some gear that you get, some swag. Check this video out up here to see what a silver member gets. But it's just a really good organization to donate to. They do a lot of good for off-roaders like us and ADV riders. And it's just nice to be able to kind of give back and become part of the community. And that's a great way to go when you got a little bit of money burning holes in your pocket. Up next, how about a new set of tires? Now I'm looking at a few different options for this summer from the Heidenau K60 Scouts, which I've had on a previous bike, to the Motaz GPSs. And then there's a new one, the Dunlop Trail Max that I've heard really good things about. All of these tires are sort of in that 50-50, 70-30 range and should do really well for the type of riding that I typically do. And I'm excited to try them out and maybe even get a review out of what this bike does on them and when you get into different sort of environments, how they feel. Up next is one of my favorite pieces of gear and something I would strongly urge you to get if you're interested in ADV riding. You can check out a video up here where I talk about it a lot more in depth, but it is the Garmin InReach. This is an amazing device which allows you some safety capabilities and some messaging capabilities and pretty much keeps you in contact with your loved ones and other riders while you're on the road in places where otherwise you might run out of cell signal. Top notch gear, top notch item to get. Up next, for your wannabe moto vloggers out there, we have a 360 cam. Now there's a bunch of different companies that make these right now. GoPro's got one, there's a few others out there. But ultimately what they do is they take two simultaneous images from 180 degrees separated and then digitally mix those together so that you get this huge 360 image of everything that you're traveling through. The great thing about this is that no matter what you're filming, you can turn the camera around digitally in post and capture everything around you. So it's a very little setup. You don't have to worry about what you're actually shooting because it's shooting everything. So if something happens while you're out there on the road and your camera didn't happen to be pointed at it, you still have it with a 360 cam, which just seems awesome for us motorcyclists, which want a no fuss, no muss type of capability to shoot everything that we're going through. 
For those who have been paying attention to the channel, you know this next one is near and dear to my heart as I've had some issues with my Big Agnes sleeping mat, but it's a sleeping mat. And there's a Nemo Quasar out on the market right now that looks like a good fit for what I really need, which is super thick, high R values, keep me warm and everything. But there's also another one out there, the Sea to Summit Ether XT. Both of these look like top-notch sleeping mats. They're both super expensive, but when it comes to comfort out on the road, I put that at a premium. So maybe a sleeping mat's gonna be the way that my money goes. Following closely behind that is the potential for a new tent. Now, I know that you guys have seen a bunch of tents on this channel. I use a little two-man, three-man tent when I'm out on, on camp trips. I use a bigger Vuz Moto tent when I'm out like camping at festivals and stuff so I can pull the bike in or keep the gear dry or whatever I need to do. I've got a big open garage for it. So the Vuz Moto tent is one that I would suggest for folks out there. If you don't have this type of tent that just has a massive garage on it, it's a good thing to have. It's probably not something you'll use regularly, but it's a nice thing to have. I've got a real quick review of the different sort of Moto tents up here if you wanna take a look at that. But I'm also looking at two other tents. One is the Nature's Hike Opolis, which is essentially the same sort of thing, but you don't put your motorcycle inside. It's got a living quarters and then this expansive, garage area where you can keep wet gear stuff that's too dirty to bring inside whatever maybe if it's just too rainy and you want to kind of shelter in place you can go out there you can still cook inside of it everything is available to you out in that garage undercover which i think is a great thing to have the other one with a similar sort of feel but a much more expensive option is the xped outer space both of them super big cavernous garage areas which i think could be really useful when you're out on the trail much smaller than the Vuz moto tent but still has that usable garage space. Next up, and this is gonna be a big one for this year, as everybody knows, I'm doing my year of training where I'm going out and trying to train with different coaches and see different styles and do videos for all of this stuff. Training, find training, get training wherever you can this year. This is a great way to spend money. I would argue probably the best bang for your buck when it comes to value added to your riding is training. I know that you guys have already seen the video for DC Dirt Camp that's out there. I'll leave a link down below. I'm gonna be doing one for Brett Tax course that I just attended in Georgia this past week and hopefully hooking up with Bill Dragu again so I can do a big one over the dart. There's a bunch of other organizations out there from Dirt Days to BMW to Jimmy Lewis. There's tons of different options. They're all across the country. If you have any questions about things that you wanna find in your region, leave a comment down below. Somebody can help you out or I will look it up for you because training is going to be paramount this year. For our next option, we have body protection. Now I have the Liat 5.5 body protector, but they just came out with the 6.5 body protector. And I'll tell you, as somebody who's used this just a little bit that having armor on with a jersey as opposed to an adventure jacket makes a huge difference in the heat of the summer or to be able to get off the bike and be mobile for camera work or anything along those lines it's just a it's a huge boon if you're going to be moving around on and off the bike and don't want to necessarily take your jacket on and off each time or want to have a little bit more airflow while you're riding game changer the next few are all going to be from one of my favorite companies. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm a big fan of what Moscow does. And their complete line right now is offerings that are all extremely awesome. From the jersey that they offer to the belt that they have, which are all fairly cheap items, all the way up to the new rack pullover jacket, which is a waterproof jacket that you can put over top of your armor and your jersey if it does start raining much or you just want a little bit more wind protection. It's an awesome jacket. I saw it this weekend at Brett Tack's training session. He was wearing one and it just looks super strong, super capable, and exactly the sort of gear you want if you're gonna be doing any sort of off-road or just riding where you don't have full waterproof coverage. It's amazing. You'll also know that I've done videos on the Nomad. You can check it out right here. And they have the new Nomax which is an incredible tank bag, just Moscow quality across the board, and it really gets you more organized. You've got the new R80 revolver out there, which is an awesome product as well for soft luggage that you can just throw on and off the bike. It doesn't require a rack or anything. That's why they call it the Reckless 80. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a great company. If you go to their website and do some shopping, you'll find that every product on there is a good quality product that you'll be happy with. Next up, we'll be talking about boots. And I run with Garen boots that are, are basically just sort of a, a trials boot. It's all leather, it's really comfortable, but it doesn't have a ton of protection. For the next boot, I'm looking at a couple of different options from the CD Adventure to the Climb Adventure boot to the Liat. 
5.5 enduro, which is probably a little bit more than I need to go. That's almost a full on motocross boot. It's super heavy on plastics and, and coverage and protection and all sorts of stuff that I probably don't need because I don't do a ton of off-road riding. And when I do, it's generally not super difficult. But between those three, I'm really looking at a different kind of boot and they're all pretty expensive. So I wanna make sure I'm making the right choice. But if you've got the funds out there, if you've got a recent cash dropped into your bank account, new boots are a great way to go. For our next one, and this might be a little bit kind of in the weeds, a little niche, but I just bought a new MacBook Air, the M1 chip, which makes the whole thing just super slick, super capable, very, very fast. And with the Air, it's such a slim down model that I find I can bring my computer on any of these trips now. It fits in small bags, it fits in backpacks. It's super small, super tight, super light and it does everything I need to do. I can edit on the road, whether that's pictures or video, because now I have this super capable, super strong, super tiny computer ready to go at a moment's notice. If you're doing any moto vlogging, if you wanna be taking pictures on your trip, if you wanna be able to stay in touch or do work, I'd seriously recommend one of these MacBooks with the M1 chip. They are just incredible, and they're only gonna get better as the different components and different apps prioritize the M1 chip over the old Intel they'll become light years ahead of any other computer you can buy out there. Lastly, and this is one of the big ones, a trip. Plan a trip with whatever those funds are. Now, when I talk about a trip, obviously you can take just a, a little skate across your state or you can do one of the BDRs or you can even travel internationally. But when I'm talking about some of those big returns out there, I'm talking about a trip like the Clean Drink Adventures with Christoph Noel and Vishu. This is a, an organization that will take you into Nepal and you'll get to ride on the Royal Enfields that they have there for you. They've got a, an organized route. They've got people that follow along with you. But what you'll be doing is actually going to little villages and little areas out in Nepal, like very remote little areas. And you take MSR filters out there to do chemical filtration of their water so that they can have clean water. And you help the village set this up and learn how to use it. And then you travel to the next village. And over the course of 10 days, end up helping hundreds, possibly even thousands of people in, in the long term. And it just seems like one of the greatest ways you could possibly spend on a motorcycle adventuring in a foreign place. It's just, it's an incredible organization. It's an incredible design behind how to get a little bit of fun plus a great deal of good out of a, a trip. And it's something that I've, I've got a great deal of respect for what Christoph and Vishu have, have pulled off with Korean Drink Adventures. If you wanna find out more, there's a link down below. I do look forward to talking to Christoph in the future, maybe on an interview, talk to him a little bit about the mission and the project that they're doing each time they go out there, what he thinks about traveling uh, in foreign lands, how he likes the motorcycles, all that different stuff. That'll be coming sometime in the future, but just know if you've got the funds and wanna take a trip this year or next, Nepal sounds like a great place to do it. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you checking in on different ways we can spend that tax money coming back to you. If you have any questions, if you have anything that I missed, definitely leave a comment down below. As always, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good with your reminder, the adventure starts with you, up here and in here. Now go out there and be safe. Everything out there under the sun Today we're going to get into everything that you have. Today we're going to get into everything you need to add to your gear for a good adventure year. Today we're going to be talking about all of the options you have to add to your adventure gear from the for us other guys that maybe didn't get so much this front action. I tried to break this down in a couple of different ways so that we're basically going from lowest to highest amount. These initial ones will be kind of the lower dollar items, things that you can get with the, the smaller returns. These first starters are just kind of nice, easy ways to get into some of the added gear that we can put in our... Everybody else will stick in this lower... We'll get started on the lower side, things that might make sense for... Where you can make your own shirts. So if you have an interest in up next, how about a new set of... Up next is one of my favorite pieces of gear. And if you don't have it, I would in fact strongly consider buying something like... Spend my rebate... So I don't need to look at it. 
strongly urge you to consider it if you have some if you have some interest in building your adventure help you out or i will look it up for you because training is going to be paramount this year no!